Book 4 Aetis was furious and planning on how to punish the Argonauts and his daughter. Medea knew that her dad is not that dumb and figure out it was her who helped Jason. She decided that the best course of action is to flee together with the sons of Phrixus to Jason. She left a lock of her hair on the bed for her mom and ran off the palace hidden, going towards the temple while being watched by the moon goddess for protection. From there, Medea saw the fire of the Argonauts and called out to them. They waited for nothing and rode to fetch her. Jason leapt off the ship and at once, Medea, down on her knees, made her appeal towards him. They have been discovered in their treachery and they have to run away now. Medea herself will put the snake guarding the fleece to sleep so they can achieve their goal. So easy, just under one circumstance. Jason has to promise in front of the gods what he promised before when it was just two of them. And he has to promise now. Jason takes Medea's hand and promises to marry her once they get back to Hellas. After that, they embrace. At once they took Argo and rode her to the sacred wood. They landed where Phrixus sacrificed the golden ram to Zeus all those years ago. On the path to the oak where the fleeces hung, the Argonauts encountered the unblinking snake, hissing and staring straight at them. As the snake coiled, he noticed a woman invoking sleep to charm him. Unwittingly, the snake was falling asleep and Medea, thanks to her herbs, finally succeeded and the serpent fully lay down in slumber. Medea called out to Jason, who snatched the golden fleece while she made sure the snake stays asleep. While Jason had it, they ran off the grove together. Holding the fleece, they reunited with the rest of the Argonauts, and Jason, while he was at it, told everyone of what Medea just did and that she's gonna sail with them from now on. And they had to sail home fast, because Aetes wanted them dead. The Colchians stood ready on the riverside, but Argo was too fast, already slipping into the sea. King Aetes sent his men after it. He knew what Medea did, and he will have his revenge. Argo had good winds, thanks to Hera, and they sailed home to Hellas. Only that thanks to Phineas and his prophecy, they knew that they had to take a different route. But which one was the correct one? Argus proposed a route by the river Ishtar, and thanks to a divine sign from Hera, it was decided. The Colchians in the meantime were gaining on them, taking a faster route on a different shoulder of the same river. By the exit branch of the waters, they barricaded it and waited for the Argonauts to show up. The Argonauts, instead of failing for an obvious trap, decided to take refuge at the Isle of Artemis. They talked to the Colchians and agreed that they actually deserved to take the Golden Fleece to Hellas, fair and square, but Medea? She was to be left on the island until the kings decided if she was to go home or to go with the Argonauts. Medea obviously didn't like any of this and talked straight to Jason. On the first obstacle, all of his promises to her have failed. Did he not remember what she did for him after all of this? Medea was fuming. She wanted to burn the ship down and Jason had to calm her down, he himself being a little scared of her. He tried to give a speech about how there is no other way, but that didn't work on her. Medea had a plan. A trap for Absyrtus, a Colchian general. They laid out gifts for him and he was to meet Medea in the temple of Artemis, where she apparently waited with a golden fleece that she stole from the Argonauts. She apparently wanted to return to her father and seek forgiveness. Medea and Absyrtus, who was her brother by the way, talked and at once Jason ambushed them as planned and killed Absyrtus right there in the temple. After the corpse was buried, they met with the rest of the Argonauts and planned their next move. They roved into the opposite shoulder of the river and waited on the Isle of Ember for the Colchians to fall into disarray after the death of their captain. Hera just adding some drama with a huge thunderstorm. Colchians didn't know if to pursue the Argonauts or to return and decided to disperse the army after all of this confusion. But oh no, the gods want to talk. The murder of Absyrtus was apparently so brutal that Zeus himself ordered the Argonauts to wipe off the guilt with the help of Circe. I mean, they're gonna suffer on their way home regardless, but this should help at least a little bit. Hera wanted to help the Argonauts out and tell them where to go because they knew none of the godly moods. And so she made Argo herself talk? 
So the ship told them why Zeus is angry and what to do. They reached the lake where Phaeton fell from the sun chariot, and he could still see and smell his smoldering body. As you can imagine, they left that spot pretty quickly, and continued their journey through the land of Celts. At last, they passed back into the sea and landed on the island of Aea, home of Circe. Only Jason and Medea entered her house, cautious. Circe immediately noticed that they came to her house with a murder on their hands. Without saying anything, the witch set out to prepare the necessary rites. After those were done, she set them down and asked all the questions. She noticed Medea's eyes, though, and at once they knew that they were related. Medea told her aunt what she did, and they were basically thrown out of Circe's house afterwards. Medea did this to herself, and she won't escape her father for long. Hera, seeing all of this happening, called upon Tethys and other gods to ensure that Argo has the safest route home. Tethys was to make sure that Argo travels safely through Scylla and Charybdis on their way out of Circe's island. Tethys did exactly that, telling Peleus, her husband on the ship, on how to pass the treacherous water safely. They sailed. They almost got charmed by the sirens, if it wasn't for Orpheus, who basically said, no you, and overplayed them on his lyre. When the Argonauts were nearing the cliffs of Scylla and Charybdis, Tethys took to steering Argo, and the rest of the narrates helped it pass the rocks on giant waves. At once they traveled onward, until they landed on an island of King Alcinous. Their rest was cut short though, as Colchians who followed them there appeared, ready to throw hands yet again. And again, Medea had to beg to not let them take her to her father, to not forget what she did for them. King Alcinous consulted his queen, Areti, and agreed that he will only give Medea to her father if she is unmarried and untouched, if you know what I mean, uh, which she was. But the queen quickly and quietly sent a herald to Jason. They were to marry tonight. And so, Jason and Medea got married and laid together on a bed prepared by nymphs. In the morning, Alcinous lived up to his word and he denied giving Medea to the Colchians. He wasn't scared of them, but the Colchians may have been a little bit scared of him, as they offered friendship instead, giving up King Aetes' pursuit. After that, the Argonauts and the newly wedded couple left the island. They almost saw the land of Pelops when a string gulf took them all the way to Libya. Argo was swept up on an inner shore of sand, now being proper stuck with nothing inside. The Argonauts turned miserable with no idea how to get out of this other than to wrap themselves in their cloaks and wait for death. Luckily, the nymphs of Libya saw them and felt sorry enough to give them a prophecy on how to get home. There was a horse coming out of the sea also, apparently, but he didn't stay. Peleus didn't need much more else to figure out the prophecy, though. They were to carry Argo on their own shoulders, following the tracks of the horse. And so they did it. Don't ask me how. Apollonius didn't know either, he instead blamed the muses for this. The Argonauts finally managed to take Argo to the shore and found drinkable water thanks to the Hesperides. They were in a mood because just a day prior they got their apples stolen by some dude, like can you imagine? But the Argonauts, they seemed trustworthy enough. After a few unfortunate events and still no sight of getting out of Libya, the Argonauts sacrificed a tripod in hopes of appeasing some gods to help them sail, Triton taking up the offer, pushing them straight into the open seas. They rode and sailed straight to Crete, but oh no! When they wanted to land, they got scared away by the giant Talos, who was throwing rocks at them, protecting the island. Medea had to step up again, girl boss. She got on her deck and started her incantations, in which she called down to Hades to show death to Talos in his mind. The power of Medea's magic forced Talos down, where he got hurt by the surrounding rocks and died. They docked in Crete that night, and continued after, in which a night of no moon and no stars came. But luckily, Apollo was there to listen to Jason's prayers, using the arrows on his bow as a sort of a lighthouse to help the Argonauts dock safely. After that, on their travels, Elphamus, one of the Argonauts, grows an island out of a piece of Libyan soil. 
you know, to have a place to live. And at last, after all these incredible adventures, they landed home in Pagasai. The end. This is where Apollonius Argonautica ends. It genuinely just tells the story of the Argonauts and their journey. Want more media? Want to know what happens next? Let me know! And as always, please like and subscribe, this took forever. I'm even gonna be cheeky and advertise my coffee here, just in case you wanted to support my work a little bit. I'll see you next time, don't forget to sacrifice to the gods, and bye bye!